How often have you heard someone say, period, sis, or child? Probably a lot if you've been on the internet. How do you say, woo, Chile? You said what? Woo, Chile. But how much do you know about the origin of those words? Or when someone says like, period, sis, whatever, snatch, all that, that, it's very much like internet culture. They're actually examples of African American language or AAL, which some of you may know as African American Vernacular English or African American English. You know what I'm saying? AAL is a distinct English dialect some Black Americans speak within their communities. It's influenced and enriched other cultures in the U.S. and majorly contributed to pop culture. Is the largest cultural capital that the United States has. Hey fam, I'm Imayan, and today you'll be hearing me and not seeing me because this is an exploration of African American language, why it's been stigmatized, and the future of this Black dialect now that so many non-Black people use it. <laughs> and no, we cannot promise you'll be any cooler after watching this. Social media's connectivity has made it so easy for very regional and culturally specific slang to become new buzzwords. It's the smart for me. It's the brains for me. It's the knowledge for me. It's the honesty and loyalty for me. It's that booty for me. <laughs> hey, for all you white people that will not stop messaging me about AAVE, -E, this is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. Don't do this. Meet Tiana Nicole. She's a TikToker and makeup artist. Her videos educating people on what AAL is have been very popular online. When it comes to AVE, if you're a Black creator and you try to do that or you try to use that, people try to demonize you for it. Um, try to say, oh, you're being aggressive or why are you getting mad or all the ways that if someone else used it, they're seen as cool. Serving very much funeral home. Yes, ma'am. Many non-Black content creators are using AAL in their tweets, captions, and videos to seem trendy or funny. They're just thinking about how can I go viral or be cool off of saying something I heard another Black person say. I personally do not think non-Black people are grasping why it's not okay to use AAVE. Um, and that's... It's just another example of black culture being used in a way it shouldn't or not being respected the way it should. Uh, it's just another cycle repeating itself. Before it engulfed TikTok, where did AAL come from? Some terms originated in the queer black and Latinx communities. No tea, no shade, no pink lemonade. But AAL also has a deeper history. There are two main theories on how African American language was developed. One is the Anglicist hypothesis. It says the West Africans who were enslaved learned English the way European immigrants would have, through exposure to native English speakers. But this theory was challenged around the 1960s by researchers who pointed out those West Africans did not come to America by choice, and the conditions of slavery made it difficult for them to learn English like the Europeans. The second theory is the Creolist hypothesis. It argues early versions of AAL developed between two West African groups who didn't know each other's languages. The argument then is, is that African-American language descended, fr descended from what we call a process of pigeonization or creolization. Creole, then you start to think where Creole language is spoken that we know of, the Caribbean, and we start trying to make those links between um, what basically happens in the Atlantic, and that is Caribbean Creole languages as well with in, in, in contact or having similarities to African American languages today. West Africans who were enslaved created their own lingo to communicate with each other. For example, using the word bogus to say something is fake is thought to have been derived from the African Hausa word boko, which means deceit or fraud. So when I say, it's bogus the dialect with such deep roots is appreciated, you understand exactly what I'm conveying. Most African Americans that are in fact uh, making it in our society uh, have one language style for the dominant society because we're not stupid. I mean, I think that's what we need to get away from. African Americans are not stupid. Dr. Blake says racism is deeply embedded in the U.S. 
And so it's unsurprising that like so many other contributions by black people in this nation, the language they created is undervalued. It's not only that the language is seen as negative or devalued, it's that the people are seen as negative and devalued. And that language then becomes a proxy for that stigmatization. So you can't outright say, I don't like you because you're black, right? But you can say, I don't like your language and therefore I won't hire you. In 1979, black parents at Martin Luther King Jr. Elementary School in Michigan sued the Ann Arbor School Board for discriminating against 11 black students and the way they spoke. Judge Charles Joyner ruled in favor of the parents. So almost 20 years after the 1979 Ann Arbor decision, you have the Oakland School Board, which puts out a resolution that acknowledges that African-American a language, African-American English, is the language being brought to the school by young African-American children. So then what happens, right? Teaching African-American students, quote, in their primary language, isn't that inflammatory? The 1996 Oakland School Board decision to acknowledge AAL led to a six-month media storm discrediting it. I think Ebonics it is absurd. The dialect was dubbed Ebonics, a term that literally meant black speech. The name was a combination of the words ebony for black and phonics for sound. Nearly everyone, including black figures like Jesse Jackson and Maya Angelou, was against what the California board was implementing. The decision even made it all the way to Congress. The continued misunderstanding of African-American English was that the media really simplified the issues, right? And the teaching of language arts is a complicated issue. What happens in school, you teach language, right? So, oh, they want us to teach African-American English. No, we want you to acknowledge African-American English. And to acknowledge it means that you have to understand it. And to understand it, you have to do the work of understanding it. In fact, one of the biggest misconceptions around AAL is this. She here. Right, she here. Now, Ms. Von Cook, that's just bad English, isn't it? How could you say that's a language? No, that's different English. The grammar in AAL is different than many other dialects of American English. But similar rules can be found in Russian, Mandarin, and Arabic. So, African-American language grammar structure is actually quite complex. Take this sentence. It's been a minute since I've seen her. Non-AAL speakers might assume this means, I haven't seen her in exactly one minute. But in AAL, it means I haven't seen her in a really long time. Here's another one. I'd be going to the store. In white mainstream American English, this means I go to the store. But in AAL, we're using the habitual be, meaning I go to the store often. The way some words are pronounced is also an indicator of AAL. And like most languages, there are regional differences. The other day I heard my daughter say, I'm finna go, right? And I was like, hey, how can you say that? You're from New York. And what you're starting to realize is through media, right? That African-American English is starting to get smaller and smaller and smaller in terms of regions. The lack of acknowledgement of AAL also has major consequences for Black people in the legal system. A study found less than 60% of African-American English was transcribed accurately. And stenographers were unable to accurately paraphrase what they'd heard 77% of the time. Remember that 1996 Oakland case I mentioned earlier? It had lasting reverberations. We had no idea that we would become the catalyst for raising the national debate about the education of African-American children. The Oakland School Board ended up publicly backing down on their initial claims, but continued teaching students how to translate AAL to standard English. And here, it's really poor young African-American children. And the reason why I want to say that is because what you have is a case where oftentimes middle-class African-American children can code switch. And it's not just middle-class African-American children. I wanted to address uh, the mandates I put in place of restricting in-person dining and acti activities that require you to remove your mask. Shorty, pull your mask up, man. People dying, Shorty. Stand, hold tight for a second. You can hear the change in how the Baltimore mayor 
addresses the press. I wanted to address uh, the mandates I put in place. Compared to how he's speaking with someone in his community. People dying, shorty. That's what we call code switching. It's going from one language to another or one dialect to another. So as a content creator on TikTok, it's unfortunately there are many ways that they try to put you in a box or put you under a certain trope. Of course, me with my personality, it's the sassy black girl, or I could be the clap black clap back girl, or I can be the super educator. Nicole says mislabeling African American words and phrases simply as internet stand culture erases black people from the expressive forms they've created in the U.S. over centuries. For the people that email me and text me and message me, can they say certain phrases? I always say, you know, you're asking how to use certain words and why can you or can't you use certain words, but you're not asking me how to make it better in my life as a black person. And this is my culture that you're trying to use in the first place. I'm a handle. The language you hear on popular Netflix shows and TikTok is actually a representation and a way of living for so many Black Americans. It's history. And there's something really beautiful about the expression of African American uh, English by its speakers. It's alive. It is explicit. It's indirect. It has all of these wonderful aspects. And so it gets preserved just by being, just by living, just by experiencing, just by expressing who we are. And so it's inevitable. And, you know, I just think this is such a, a language that has so much life. And as long as there is life in us, it will continue to be produced.